Leather's like armor, and we need to maintain that armor. It's like our second skin. Because we never see Cloud with dry armor on, it's always well maintained. And you'll never catch the man lacking, especially in Smash, because if someone's maining him, you're going to get destroyed. People that Cloud main are toxic ass players. So enough foreplay. You still get leather care, and so did I. But after I unlocked my third eye from a few local craftsmen or leather makers in the area, I've learned the basics, so I'm here to teach you. Now let's get into the knowledge so that I can bestow it onto you. I'm sure the one question you're asking is, how often should I clean and condition my leather items? Now that really just depends. It depends on what you're using said leather items for. So for example, leather boots that are constantly used may need to be conditioned every three to six months, maybe a year. Leather jackets can go years without conditioning, but if you're caught in rainy weather or salty air, it will dry the hide out, which will need to be conditioned and re-moisturized. Side, Side leather, leather tip. tip. If you're ever caught in rainy weather, here's a tip for you. Do not let it dry in front of a heat source or a heater. Let it dry normally in room temperature, then after it's done drying, recondition that bad boy immediately because a hide will be completely dried out from the rainy weather. This goes for boots, leather jackets, and even your leather purse or man purse or whatever you carry around with you. So keep that in mind. Now moving forward, just like you cleanse your face, we need to cleanse our leather items sometimes. Now you shouldn't have to always cleanse your leathers with saddle soap unless it's used in environments with salty air or just dirty areas. Just like our skin, we use cleansers to pretty much get all the dirt and grime and oils out of our face. Basically cleanse the surface area of our skin. The same thing is applied to our leather items just in general. Now saddle soap is basically the same thing. It lifts the dirt out of the leather, but it also strips the oils out, which can lighten the leather up. So keep that in mind when you're applying your saddle soap, especially to like dark brown leathers, it will lighten it up a little bit. But once you re-moisturize it, which you're going to have to do right after you cleanse your leathers, it will darken it up again. So, you know, just fair warning. Now, if your items are only really getting city wear, you may not really need to cleanse your bags, jackets, or boots, really. And this goes for most people that are probably watching this. I only really use my leather goods just for going out to the city and walking around in them. So they don't really experience a lot of dirt and grime because I'm not rubbing up against mud or other random surfaces that I might get my boots in. Because I'm not a hardworking man, I'm just like another liberal with no job. Now when your leather is dry or aged, if you let it just sit, the leather will rot and it will rip, which you don't want. Sure, aging looks cool on leather jackets and adds like personality, but it's not good if it rips. You'll be quite aware of your leathers being dried out because they will look dull and they won't look as beautiful as they used to be. So an interesting fact that I had learned is if your leathers are very, very dry, it needs moisture. It needs, it needs to be revitalized with a conditioner. And usually if you wipe some conditioner on it, since it's so dry, it will absorb all the conditioner that you threw into that. And usually after a 30 to an hour time period, you might be able to go in with another wipe of conditioner just to rejuvenize the poor leather thing that you let just sit in your closet and it being very dry. Because any leather jacket that is dry or aged is going to really need to be re-moisturized since it's lost most of its oils or it's just been dried out from the time that it's been used. Now, the items that you're going to need are a horse hairbrush, a microfiber cloth, you're going to need some distilled water, and this is only used to help get some of the surface grime and dirt that might be on your leather boots from just city wear. You may need saddle soap, you may not. It all depends on your environment that you were in, or if you really feel like your leather jacket's very dirty and you just don't know where it was at. It's better safe to be sorry. It's better safe than being sorry. Yeah, that's the saying. Now, there's very different types of conditioners and oils that you may want to use on your leather jackets or items, and I'll get into a brief description of the three that I do have in my inventory currently. Now, there are different types of conditioners from oils to waxes to cream. And each one of these have a different effect on your leathers and also have a different finish. So the best thing to do is spot test it. So on the inside of your leather or somewhere you can't really see, spot test it to see if you like the outcome of that conditioner. Now we have our good trusty old mink oil, which is something that's been heavily recommended by a lot of people, especially on Amazon. You can pick all these three things up on Amazon if you are interested in the products I use. And no, I am not sponsored by any of these leather conditioners. You are crazy if you think I got a sponsorship. This is all sponsored by myself. I spent my own money on this, these products. So I was looking for mink oil because I needed to darken up my leathers and that's what mink oil typically does, especially for really brown leather jackets. It will darken the browns to a shade darker, just like how saddle soap lightens it up a little bit. 
mink oil will darken up your leathers. Now, with the leather oil and this leather cream, or I like to call it a paste just because of the consistency, these two products will not darken your leathers from what I'm aware of, uh, just from testing it. But again, it's always best to spot test your leathers just in general, because you want to make sure that it's going to have a finish that you are happy with, because if you just rub all this conditioner onto your leather jacket and you hate how it's finished, there's not much you can do. You're going to have to just deal with it. But with mink oil, it will darken up your leathers, which I really do like because I do have some aged items that needs very deep conditioning. And that's what mink oil typically is. It conditions very deep into the leather and it's really great for nourishing and moisturizing your leather jackets or your leather boots. So I use these on all my black items that I do have and it just darkens them up a little bit. And it doesn't really have too much of a shine to it, which I do appreciate. I don't really like shininess to my uh, boots in general, but this leather oil, for example, is also another great product to use or pick up. It is Otter Wax and it's a leather oil and it's also a polishing oil. So this is a very good product if you're just going to be doing regular maintenance on your leather boots or your leather jackets or your leather bags or something. This is something you could use every so once in a while if you need to just repolish or revitalize your leather items that you might have. And it's something of a go-to for me that I've been using on my leather boots every few months. I will just throw this back on and it helps lessen the dullness that some of my leather boots will have after some repeated use. Now, last but not least, we have this leather cream, what I like to call it the leather paste because of the consistency, and it helps restore, waterproof, and protect your leather goods. So this is a perfect leather cream or paste just to throw on your leather boots always because you're going to always want to have some type of water resistance because out here in New York it does rain often and there's been plenty of times that I've been wearing my guidis and they've gotten wet and this has helped you know kind of protect it as much as it can obviously it won't completely protect your boots I don't think there's going to be any product that will do that especially in a crazy rainstorm but if it's like drizzling or you're able to get out of the rain very quickly, it's a great product to use so that you might not need to recondition. Also, another side leather tip that I forgot to mention. If you ever go buy anything firsthand from a leather store, you go to Doc Martens, you buy a pair of Docs, or you buy some Guidis or a leather bag of some sort and it's brand new, go back home and condition it. The thing is we never know how long it's been sitting in the box or in the warehouse and it most likely will be dry. Well, most of the time manufacturers will condition the leather goods just always. It's like a good practice if it's a good manufacturer, but uh, over time, you know, it does dry out. So again, we don't really know the environment that it was in. So it's always good just to recondition the leathers because you at least know when you had done it. So you have a, a decent time frame of when you may need to recondition it later. And another thing that I had learned too as well is that with Doc Martens, it's a very painful experience to, you know, wear the leather and try and, you know, break them in. Conditioning actually helps it break in easier. So if you're using a leather conditioner of some sort, whether it's a cream, an oil, or mink oil, it will help <clears throat> moisturize the leather and it will be less dry. So when you're walking around, it will have better stretch and movement and it will allow you to break them in faster. So it's always good to just condition it, and I know it's a pain in the ass just to try and condition, but it's always best to do that, always. So keep that in mind. So this is a part where I teach you how to clean your leathers. So with your horse hairbrush, you're going to want to clean all the seams and the entire piece of leather that you are trying to condition. So if it's your boots, you're going to want to go through with the horse leather brush. And basically what the horse hairbrush does is it's going to clean the surface area of dirt, grime, and dust, which is great. Now, if the environment of your boots is just city wear, you might get away without having to use saddle soap. So the other thing to do as well is with your microfiber cloth in your distilled water, you're going to want to spray distilled water onto your microfiber cloth and just clean the entire boot all the way around. And this will just help get rid of any residue that might be actually stuck onto the leather. And it will just help better absorb the uh, conditioner that you might be using too as well. But you're going to have to let it dry for 10 minutes at least so that the water is just completely gone. So after that's done, you're going to want to grab your favorite product of conditioner, whatever that is, and basically just rub in circles and go throughout the entire boot. Remember to keep it very consistent and don't over moisturize your leathers. So have a nice, just regular small amount of oil at first and, you know, 
go with it. Just eyeball it, try your best not to just overcomplicate things and use too much conditioner on it. So go very small, small is always better, and try and lather as much as you can throughout the entire surface. Keep it very consistent throughout, and then you should be good. It's a very simple process. I'll be showing you some of my leather boots and also jackets that I need to condition, but let's pan over to me conditioning some of those pieces now. Before I can even begin to condition this leather bag, I have to ask the customer first on what conditioner they want to use. So let's go ask. What leather conditioner do you want me to use for this leather bag? Just go with the Ming Pace and then later on I can always put on like different shit on it. I could put you can, leather. yeah. Yeah, so I might do that. That's what I did with my boots. The Mink yeah, Oil yeah. Pace. Darken, darken it up. All right, cool. I, I was curious on how that will look. Thank you. Make cool, yeah. Okay, thank you. As you can see from my leather bag, it is a lot more shinier. This is a bit more matte or dull. And that's only because that's been conditioned already with a different, completely different um, conditioner. I'll figure out which one it is. I believe I had used the leather cream on this bad boy. So this was already pretty conditioned. I just wanted to add some leather cream on that or the paste onto that. So it's a bit more shinier. It's obviously very well conditioned. Compared to this, this is a lot more matte as you can see. Now, one good tip is you're going to want to lather the leather as evenly as possible. Like, so you want to get good coats on it. So it's like when you're painting, you're going to want to go with the same stroke and also just painting all equal amounts of, uh, very consistent with the amount of cream you're using or whatever you're using. And you're just going to want to make sure you're not going to oversaturate the leather whatsoever because it will take, it will take in all that leather. Like leather will absorb almost everything you put on it. And, uh, unfortunately using too much is also very bad for the leather so you just want to keep it with a good amount consistently so you can see that this is a lot darker now um, it's a lot more darker it's more hydrated it has more of a sh it has a small amount of sheen to it but it's also not as shiny as this leather bag over here but it looks a lot better now the leather looks more conditioned and this is now ready to go but you gotta wait 24 hours for this to dry and it's nice now because you can really see the uh, the detail of the scarring on the bag and the interesting pattern of the leather. Now that it's like really hydrated. It's very beautiful leather that we got going on here. I'm really happy how this came out. And yeah, so now we wait 24 hours for this to dry off. But you can tell there's a very stark difference now um, from the past video of it being a lot more matte. This is more hydrated, you can very much tell so. And yeah, now we're good to go. So that's the bag. Remember, whenever you're doing any leather conditioning, you're gonna wanna be very thorough. So I took out the leather strap here from this and you can tell it's very, very dry. It needs to be conditioned. And I had to take it out so that I can be very thorough with conditioning it fully, as well as getting the neckline in general. We have only conditioned one side. As you can see, this is still dry. It was exactly like that. Now it's a lot darker but I'll show you the huge difference once I'm done conditioning all this. This is the leather, fully conditioned. You can tell that there's no more fading on the leather and it's a lot darker now. So this is the end of the video. And uh, I would like to mention that I had to refilm this twice because the first time I had this stupid conditioner on. You know, there's some days that I record myself and I'm like, wow, I look like a Karen. The haircut needs to go. And I didn't know that it was very loud because it gets really hot in my room. Now, thank you for watching. I hope you gained some type of knowledge or appreciation for taking care of your leathers. And I hope that you learned some basic skills here. Now, if you feel like I didn't go over some certain parts that are really detrimental for leather goods, or you have more information or facts about taking care of your leathers, leave some comments down below in the comment section. I would love to read them, and I'd love to gain more knowledge about how to take care of leathers better or whatever. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that I can cut my damn hair. Once I hit 100K, I'm cutting this all off. It's gone, it's going. Like, I don't want this anymore, please. We're 5,000 away from 100K. I just need to cut this hair, I need an excuse. Please help a poor man out. All right, whatever, see you guys later. <laughs>